good morning. I'm Patrick Conley with Hayes Handpiece Repair Company. And I'm here with Don and Jenna this morning. And we're gonna talk about high speed and low speed handpiece maintenance repair. So I thought we'd start out with the high speeds because that's probably one of the most critical aspects of, uh, of the, the maintenance process. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna have a couple things here for us to start talking about. We'll have one of your Midwest traditions which I think all the offices are using. We also have an impact air uh, surgical handpiece, and the technique for louvering and purging these handpieces is going to be the same, but I just wanted to make you aware of that you have these two types of high-speed handpieces. We needed a can of high-speed handpiece lubricant. This is a Midwest brand. For some slow-speed applications, we're going to use this particular product with an E-type connector on it. And then we also have um, two by twos uh, that are soaking in uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, and we'll talk about what we're gonna use those for as well. So with high speed uh, maintenance, after procedure's done, you're getting ready to turn the room around. What I like to do with the hand piece is first thing I'll do is take a two by two uh, with the rubbing alcohol on, on it. And all I wanna do here is wipe the shell down, removing any blood, uh, saliva, tooth particles that might be on the shell, the hand piece. I try and stay away from disinfectant wipes because we know we're going to sterilize the hand piece. We're going to put it in the autoclave. And the reason we don't like the disinfectant wipes is that the, the liquid that's in those wipes is very corrosive and it has a tendency to drift into the openings on the head of the hand piece. So all we know, since we know we're going to sterilize and an autoclave that hand piece, it's just some rubbing alcohol again just to clean that shell off. So I'll go ahead and I'll wipe that shell off. And then we want to go ahead and lubricate the hand piece. So I'll take a, a can of the, the lubricant. And as you look on the back of the hand piece, you'll see four different tubes uh, on there. The two smaller tubes are for the water spray that comes out of the hand piece. The smaller of the two large holes is the air drive. It's the air drive that's blowing the air up through the hand piece into the turbine and that's what drives the turbine and gives us our speed. The large hole on here is the exhaust. So the compressor somewhere in the office, the doctors hit the foot pedal, it forces the air up through the air drive, hits the turbine, drives the turbine, and you'll feel the exhaust air then blowing out the back of the cap, some out of the front, but the majority of the air then is forced back down through the large tube, which is the exhaust tube. So when we lubricate the hand piece, we want to use the smaller of the two large holes, since that's the tube that's going up into the turbine. So all I'll do is I'll, I'll get a, the can of lubricant, I'll line it right up with, that air, <coughs> with the air drive, and as fast as I can push down on this cap, you're going to see lubricant ooze out of that, that handpiece. So as fast as I can push down on it, I'll go ahead and let that off and get that lubricant up into that turbine. So I'll go ahead and do that now, just a quick spray. As fast as I can get it down, I'm off. The lubricant was oozing out the head of the hand piece. So now we got to go ahead and expel that debris, uh, that lubricant out of that hand piece. But before I do that, let me mention one other thing that I forgot to mention. The reason we're doing this is when the doctors are running their hand, the hand pieces and they let off the foot pedal, it actually creates a suction back up into the head of the hand piece. And so we're pulling up into the head of the hand piece, back up into the head of the hand piece saliva, tooth particles, and we want to expel that uh, prior to autoclaving it. Because if we don't, what happens is um, if we autoclave the handpiece prior to expelling that debris, it gets baked onto the turbine itself. And over time, uh, that'll cause those bearings to start breaking down. The dock will be starting to cut on the tooth, and all of a sudden uh, they'll tell you, oh, I'm not getting any torque or all of a sudden you start hearing a crazy high-pitched sound coming from the handpiece, and we know that those bearings are starting to break down. So our whole goal with lubricating and purging that handpiece is to try, one, we want to lubricate those handpiece, those bearings, because they're running about 400,000 RPMs, but two is to get rid of that debris that builds up into the head of those handpieces. So um, that's what we're trying to do uh, with that lubricant. We've lubricated the handpiece. Prior to, to running that then, I want to make sure I go ahead and I'll put a, uh, a burr into the handpiece. 
I'll go ahead and I'll hook it onto the hose. I've already lubricated the hand piece. I try as best I can to keep it in a downward fashion just so the lubricant doesn't drift back down into the hose. <clears throat> and then over a paper towel, I'll go ahead and I'll run that hand piece. You can leave the water uh, off if you like. I think it's a little bit easier. It doesn't make quite a mess. It doesn't impact us in any way to run that without the water on. Um, but over a paper towel, you'll see the excess lubricant coming out onto the paper towel. It also expels that debris that's built up into the head. And I like to run these for a good 25, 30 seconds to expel that debris and get that excess lubricant out of the head of the hand piece. Once I'm done with that, I'll remove the burr because we don't want to sterilize the hand piece with a burr in it. I also want to go ahead and I'll close that latch, uh, that lever up on that hand piece because we want to sterilize it with that lever closed. I'll remove the hand piece from the hose and it's nice to go ahead and take a, your 2x2 two two with that rubbing alcohol and wipe off any excess lubricant that may be on the shell of the hand piece. I'll go ahead and I'll bag the hand piece and we're ready to sterilize. Something else to think about when we're, that causes hand pieces to break down. You saw the picture with all the debris that can build up onto that turbine, but the other issue that we're trying to avoid is corrosion. And when we're autoclaving, obviously we're using steam uh, heat to sterilize that hand piece. Uh, that moisture gets inside the shell of the hand piece as it's sterilizing. So it's really critical after we bag it and we sterilize it that we try and get through drying cycles. Um, to make sure that hand piece um, is, is thoroughly dry prior to it being used the next time. So uh, if you're ever um, removing hand pieces from your sterilizer and you're noticing that the bags are still damp, it's typically because we didn't get through a drying cycle uh, for some reason, um, or perhaps we had too much uh, stuff stacked on top of it and the things that are at the, in the bottom of the pile in the, in the autoclave uh, don't get dried out enough. Uh, if that's the case, just make sure you're laying the, uh, the bags with the hand pieces in out on the counter and allow them to com continue to air dry. Okay. And that's all you really need to do with your high speed hand pieces. Any questions? Um, so we definitely leave the lever closed when we autoclave, correct? Never it, leave it open. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So after we're done purging, we've removed the burr and then we, we want to go ahead and close that lever on that hand piece prior to bagging it and autoclaving it. And never spray with cabicide or wipe down with cavi wipes or any kind of disinfecting wipes or spray. Correct? For sure. If we know the hand piece is going to go into the autoclave and be sterilized, there's no reason to use uh, uh, those cavi wipes or any type of spray prior because um, we know we're going to get sterilized. The liquid again in those, uh, in those sprays and those wipes is extremely corrosive and it will get into the heads and uh, start the corrosion process and locking up bearings. It also gets really tacky as well when it gets sterilized, and that causes bearings to get bogged down as well. Thank you. Sure. And we do the same procedure with the, the surgical handpiece as well? Uh, identical steps on the surgical handpiece. The only thing you'll notice on the surgical when you look at the back end is the two smaller tubes. There's just one tube for the water. And when you're running these, you just see a steady stream of water come out of the handpiece as opposed to a mist. And that handpiece was designed for that. And then we're lubricating into that same smaller of the two large holes. That's correct. So identical steps to being taken. Yep. All right. So that was the high speeds. And then we'll go ahead and talk about some low speed attachments here for you. So one of the first things you'll see is, um, is your motors, your slow speed motors. Um, these are typically lube-free hand pieces, so we don't need to lubricate them, and they're running at a much slower speed, so you don't typically see your slow speed stuff break down like you do your, your high speed hand pieces. So really all we need to do with these is after procedure's done, uh, since we know we're gonna autoclave your motors, you'll pop the motor off of the, off the hose, you'll just wipe it down with some rub, uh, the rubbing alcohol wipes, we'll go ahead and bag it and sterilize it. Again, very critical to get through the drying cycles Make sure we're uh, keeping the inside of these motors dry. Okay. And then when we're ready, just snap that back on to your hose and you're ready to go. One of the attachments that you, you use on your uh, slow speeds is a, uh, a star motor to angle with a swing latch head. There's not much to do here either other than wipe down with the 
uh, with a little two by two with the rubbing alcohol. Go ahead and bag it and sterilize it. Again, just trying to make sure we get through the drying cycles. One other attachment that you use a lot at your offices is a, uh, it's, uh, referred to as an Anthogear Micro Nitai um, 8 to 1 gear reducing handpiece. And these are uh, to sterilize, or excuse me, to, um, uh, from a maintenance standpoint on these attachments, what we want to do with these after a procedure is, again, we're just going to wipe that shell down since we know we're autoclaving the handpiece. We're just going to use our 2x2 two two with the rubbing alcohol, wipe any excess debris off the shell, and then you have a different can of lubricant for this attachment. This is referred to as an E-type connector. It'll fit just into the back of the handpiece. And as fast as I can spray and get my finger down on there, I'll lift my finger off and you'll see lubricant ooze out the head of the handpiece. I'll wipe that excess lubricant off uh, with the two by two. I'll go ahead and I'll put the handpiece back onto the unit and I'll run that in with a downward fashion again to keep the lubricant out of the motor for a good 15, 20 seconds. It's not critical here to have, uh, with these slow speeds, to have a burr in the, in the latch. If you choose you wanted to, there's no problem doing that, but you don't have to at that point. But I'd go ahead and run that for a good 25, 30 seconds as well, and then remove the attachment, wipe off any excess lubricant, with your two by two, bag it and go ahead and sterilize it. And do we sterilize these with the latch closed as well? I would, yes. Okay. I'd just go ahead and close the latch on that as well. And then again, make sure we get through the drying cycles. And uh, you keep hearing about drying cycles. It's really critical. One of the biggest things that I see uh, with hand pieces coming in um, is actual corrosion on a, on a lot of the components internally. So that's typically coming from that autoclave process. Mm -hmm not getting through that drying cycle. So as best you can, you know, make sure we get through drying cycles. If you have to open up the, the autoclave because you need an instrument in there prior to things being totally dried, uh, make sure we're laying things out on the counter to get dried out. Especially at the end of the day, if you like to run things one more time before you go home for the day, sometimes um, at the end of the day we uh, open the, the sterilizer up and the bags are still a little bit damp. Let's get them laid out on that countertop. Mm -hmm paper side up so that they'll air dry overnight for you. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right, any other questions? Um, I don't think you have any questions. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Sure.